If you're a fan of Tim Burton's Batman movies, then stick around, because you're about to discover 10 incredible facts about Batman Returns. Two popular characters were taken out of the movie. Max Shrek's character was supposed to be Harvey Dent, played by Billy Dee Williams, who was planned to become Two-Face during the climax after Catwoman kisses him with a taser, which would then set the stage for the third film. Robin was also going to be introduced and would have been played by Marlon Wayans, who had already been fitted for a suit. But Tim Burton decided to remove Harvey Dent and Robin from the story because there were too many characters to introduce and properly develop. Michelle Pfeiffer wasn't the first choice for Catwoman. It can be pretty hard to imagine anyone other than Michelle Pfeiffer playing Catwoman's iconic on-screen performance. But before she took the role, the four-time Oscar nominee Annette Bening was initially cast, but had to back out at the last minute when she discovered she was pregnant. Playing Catwoman was no easy task. Michelle Pfeiffer had to be vacuum sealed into her rubber costume that also had to be painted with gloss between takes to keep it shine. The catsuit was so tight that she could hardly move, hear, or breathe while wearing it. This was also before the days of mainstream CGI use, so she really did flutter her eyes like that, and she really did put that live bird in her mouth. Pfeiffer also trained for three months to use a whip, and she was able to knock the heads off the four mannequins in one try on the first take. Danny DeVito suffered for his art. Danny DeVito had to sit in the makeup chair for up to four hours each day while the makeup crew applied his elaborate prosthetics. He also had to put a blend of mouthwash and food coloring in his mouth to create the mucus the penguin was always spewing up, and he really did eat raw fish in the movie. The original penguin was supposed to make a cameo. Burgess Meredith, who played the penguin in the cartoonish 60s TV series, signed on to play the penguin's father. Sadly though, the aging star got really sick before filming, and he was replaced by Paul Rubens, aka Pee Wee Herman. The penguin's bird army was a mixture of nature and technology. There were 12 king penguins and 30 blackfoot penguins used in the movie, and for the more difficult scenes they also used men in penguin suits, Stan Winston's animatronics, and CGI penguins. A couple fast facts about some of the production are that about 30 bat suits were created for the movie, because once a suit got scuffed up, it was switched out with a new one so that Batman always looked pristine on camera. And the cat ear looking shadow on Michelle Pfeiffer's face is really cool for shadowing, no pun intended, but it actually wasn't planned, and was just a side effect of the lighting they wanted for the shot. The final shot wasn't supposed to be in the movie. The final shot which shows Catwoman glancing at the bat signal was added in just a few weeks before the film opened, because Warner Brothers decided they wanted Catwoman to survive so they could make a spin-off movie. Creating the added final shot wasn't as easy as they thought it was going to be, because all of the composite work ended up costing them a quarter of a million dollars to produce. The original storyline was going to be much different. Before the screenplay was changed to focus on the Penguin running for mayor, the original script had Catwoman and the Penguin teaming up together to search for hidden treasure beneath Wayne Manor, but once Tim Burton was brought on board, he put a quick stop to that bad idea. Tim Burton didn't initially want to direct another Batman movie, because he thought he had done all he wanted to do with the character, but Warner Brothers was able to change his mind by saying he would have more creative control, meaning it could be darker than the first movie. However, that decision had consequences because McDonald's and other kid-friendly businesses couldn't promote the film because it was too dark for their young audiences. This is why Tim Burton wasn't asked to come back to do a third film, and why Batman Forever was more style over substance because Warner Brothers wanted the next films to be more friendly for merchandisers. Do you think Batman Returns is too dark? Let me know in the comments below. To discover more facts about other GDPG-13 movies, click a video on the screen. And subscribe and click the bell to know when I post my next video, so you can keep learning more fun facts about your favorite films.